Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait for the wee light to come on there. <laughs> we're, we're indeed. You can see the numbers at the bottom of the screen there. We're okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On. Yeah. Hope you're all good. Um. So, this is supposed to be Sunday. It's actually Monday, but hey ho. It is Sunday. But it's Sunday. Um, and I'm in Stornoway. And you're in Inverness. I've been to London. And you've been to London. I hope. I hope so. I'm back. I hope. <laughs> and I hope we've all had a good week. Um, so this coming week, oh gosh, what's on? Uh, food bank. <laughs> Got to think really hard. Food bank um, on Wednesday between 9 and 12 and We Care will be on. And then food bank again on Friday between 9 and 12. But on Thursday, cheesy chat. Ooh. I think. Yes. <laughs> if I've got all my dates right. That's correct. Cheesy chat will be on. Um, so, you know, if you're living in Inverness and you're just looking for some company between a, a 10 and 12, come for a baked roll and a coffee and a blather. And there might even be some colour in there to do. Who knows what there might be to do. Yeah. Yeah. Look forward to it. And that. you get to see us. So that's good. That's it was all good. going so well. It was going really well, <laughs> wasn't it? And then next Sunday, our morning worship at 10.30. One o'clock will be Messy Church. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening... At six o'clock, hopefully we'll be back on here live. I'm hoping so, because I don't think we've got any time to record the following I don't think week. We do. <laughs> we've kind of squeezed this in today. Uh, Bruce is in London this week, so um, yes. and I'm, and then he comes back and I go away. So anyway, I hope this all makes sense. <laughs> it did until you started talking. It did talking. until I started talking, didn't it? <laughs> hey -ho. Anyway, welcome to worship, um, and we pray that as you join with us. Uh, you'll be really blessed. We're going to start with song number 39. Song 39. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, hail thee as the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the clouds of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Song number 39, if you have a song book. <coughs> Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, hail thee as the sun above. Help the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the clouds of doubt
So let's come before God in prayer now. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you because we can come before you in prayer and know that the creator of this world will hear our humble petitions. As we gather before you, Lord, we recognise your greatness. We recognise how wonderful you are. We recognise how many amazing gifts you have showered upon us each and every day of our lives. We thank you, Lord, that even in the darkest of circumstances, that we can know that you are there with us, guiding us, directing us. We thank you, Lord, because we have friends. We have people who love us and whom we can love too. We thank you, Lord, that we can share in fellowship, fellowship one with the other. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to gather for worship, to praise your name, to feel that we are a body of people who love you and want to serve you. Lord, we thank you because all that we need has been provided for us and far, far more besides. Lord, as we spend this time together, we want to bring before you the needs of this world. There are so many people and there are so many different things which cause us concern. There are so many situations in which people are living at this moment, some living in fear, some living in the most wonderful of conditions, some not knowing where their next meal will come from, and some having all that they could possibly ever want. Lord, help us to do our part to ensure that each person has what they need, that each person is able to recognise that they are valued by you and by us. Lord, as we spend this time in worship, open your word to us, speak to our hearts and help us to draw close to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the theme for this evening's meeting is creation. God's creation. Yes. And well, as we record it, it is still a beautiful day. I haven't Wait. checked the forecast. I don't know what the forecast is going to be like. Well, I have checked the forecast. It's going to be awful in the last few days in London. There's a lot of rain. Oh, right. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm going away, or I will have been away, and got wet. And it's going to be nicer here throughout this week. I don't know what it's like currently on Sunday here or wherever you are. But it's nice here just now. It is, as we record. <laughs> We're going to turn to Psalm 381. Psalm number 381. Lord, your praises fill both earth and sky, made in the likeness of God. Little children, lift your name on high, made in the likeness of God. Lord, your praises fill both earth and sky, made in the likeness of God. Little children, lift your name on high, made in the likeness of God. Crown the glory and honour, made in the likeness of God. Give dominion in all the earth. Jesus 
something everywhere, rain in the light is so cold. Oh, the glory and order, rain in the light is so cold. Give it to me, you did know the earth, rain in the light is so cold. Cha cha cha, be! Yeah. Would you like me to go and get the drawing pens? <laughs> but to stick, to stick in to get me the high notes. <laughs> They're fairly high. Yeah, and that's not even the high. I could, it could have been even higher if I could have played it in the proper key, but never mind. <laughs> yes. We're going to share in our scripture reading, and this evening it's from Genesis chapter 1, continuing just a little bit into Genesis chapter 2, since we're looking at creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And so it was. God called the expanse sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and he gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning. The fourth day. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living and moving thing with which the water teems, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. <coughs> Livestock, creatures that move along the ground and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. 
then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the <coughs> air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. And this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. We're going to turn to song number 14. Song 14. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies, Father, unto thee we raise this, our sacrifice of praise. Oh 
creation we think of some of the beautiful places in this world and boy have we been to some um, beautiful places so we're going to talk about some of them just now and then maybe a little later on we're going to show you some things that remind us of some of the beautiful places <laughs> okay beautiful places we've been we, we are very 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 um, lucky to be able to go back and forward to Orkney um, I do not take for granted how beautiful that is. Um, the, the sense of being away from a lot of the busyness is fantastic, but we can also be busy if we want to be. When we go out um, just out of town, I mean, it's literally, you know, a step over from your mum's to uh, at the countryside. Um, and we can see the beauty there. We're surrounded by the sea, literally, on the island, but we can actually see it from, from where your mum lives. And uh, I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm so, so grateful that we can go and see all of those things. But in amongst that, there's so much more to it um, with a lot of the historical sites that there are that we can go and visit if we, if the, the fancy takes us really. Um, we've been to so many different sites and uh, we've been to so many of the different islands as well. Each one has its own unique character. Um, I wouldn't say any of them is more unique than another because that's just nonsense. If it's unique, it's unique. Uh, so they are all unique in their own way and to go and visit each of the islands also helped us um, appreciate what God's done for us. Mm. I was thinking about um, <clears throat> places that the army have taken us. Um, mm -hmm. We've had such a, a great opportunity of being able to be so many lovely places. Each appointment we've had, there has been something different about it. But I think about Stornham, I think we've been out um, in the Western Islands. Maybe that's because I'm going to be there today. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Um, I think particularly, I mean, there's gorgeous beaches all over, but down in Harris, um, some of the most beautiful, beautiful beaches ever. Um, and I just remember um, you being asked to do a wedding in, in Rodale Church, which is it is a historical site. It's not used for worship mm. anymore. There's no electricity in it. <laughs> um, and there was lots of things we had to think about. Um, we weren't allowed to throw confetti. We, you know, there was no, we had to put things by the candles. Um, on on the, that on the floor, remember. Mm. But I just remember the day; it was the most gorgeous day, absolutely roasting hot. Um, and the bride and groom had their wedding pictures taken. On, I think it was Sheila Boss they went mm -hmm. to. Um, and when the pictures were um, printed, if you hadn't known, you'd have thought they'd been somewhere exotic. Uh, such was the beauty, um, of, of the sand, of the sea, the colour of the sea. Um, and and there's, there's just loads of, of different aspects of, of, of Lewis that uh, just never cease to amaze. We've got Lewis and then right down to Harris, that whole um, stretch uh, and how different how different it is from Orkney and Shetland. Um, the hills, the magnificence of the hills, it, it, just amazing. Lots of really beautiful places. And again, you know, historical sites that we've mm -hmm. been. I think about the Standing Stones. Um, of Callanish. Uh, they are in the shape of a cross but with a circle in the middle um, and they are just beautiful um, and we never cease to amaze at the wonder of God's love when we are there. <clears throat> I, I think one of the things that we we need to do is start where we're from um, and appreciate where we've, we've actually come from. So you know I, I grew up in Dundee and with my friends we were allowed to go to the hills um, and because thankfully we were on the north end of Dundee it was a fairly straight road out to the hills and we'd start our, our walk down to Bridgefoot um, 
quite often stop near the War Memorial for a little refreshment there and then carry on our, our way out towards the hill, passing Martin's Stain in the field where Martin slayed the dragon. It's one of the local one of the local stories of Dundee, the nine maidens um, who were eaten by the dragon. And Martin finally, I think a little bit too late, got in on the act and slew the dragon in, in the field. Um, there is a, a stone, a Pictish stone actually, with carvings on it. Um, and then we get up to the hills and, you know, there would be two or three hills that we would go to. And uh, on top of one of them, supposedly, are the ruins of a, a hill fort. You know, I don't think I've ever actually been able to pick out anything that looked like the ruin of a hill fort. But apparently, <coughs> on, on those hills. Yeah. But then to turn around and to look down across all the fields that we've just walked over um, or walked past. Um, back to the city, over the city to see the river and the bridges and over to Fife and possibly even as far as Lothian. It was just incredible to be able to look all that distance and appreciate that that was on my doorstep as a child. Mm. Yeah. I'll stay in Scotland because <laughs> I've got other places for later. Um, <clears throat> so when we were in divisional headquarters we had the privilege, and I do see it as a privilege, to visit so many lovely places. Um, and I had, I had never been to Kinloch Raven before. I don't ever remember. I may well have been there as a child. But the drive over there, eh, when you go through Glencoe, mm -hmm. um, and you just think, there's nothing. It's just these hills all around you. Um, and, and it's just, oh my goodness. Um, I think we saw it in, in different ways. We've seen it in the rain, we've seen it in the sun and how different it all looks. But again, it just reminded us of the beauty and, and sometimes stark places that, that we are. And another place that I I think is quite sad is when you go to Hoy and it's the grave of Betty Corrigal. Mm -hmm. Here it, you have all these beautiful scenery around about you, the lovely hills, and then there's just this grave of this girl who was... She... she um, got herself pregnant out of wedlock um, and I think the guy was he in the Navy or something and he went away um, and she was so desperate that she hung herself, she took her own life and because of that she couldn't be buried on consecrated mm -hmm. ground and you have this little grave, you know, all the hills <laughs> round about and the beauty and then this, this, this such a sad sight in the midst of the, the beauty, you mm -hmm. know, and I just think we, we've got so many, you know, whole of creation it goes from being you have all the majesty and everything and then there's all this stark not nice well I wouldn't say it's not nice but you know what I'm you know what I'm trying to say it's it's just the contrasts um mm -hmm. are, are so amazing yeah. <clears throat> I think about um, Malta um, it's a long long time since I've been in Malta um but it when I went there it was the first time that I'd had the, the experience of going abroad and uh, into a different culture, but a similar culture in many ways. Um, but going and seeing a lot of people on a small island and just such a different um, landscape to what I was used to, because I'm used to green fields round about me and in Malta, the, the colour is, is kind of like light brown. Mm -hmm. um, the soil tends to be very dry and that has an impact on the whole of the island and, and how it looks. And that really, really struck me um, that this was a different, a whole different landscape from the one that I was used to. Um, some, of the, some of the actual rocks might have been very similar but it looked very different because uh, there wasn't the greenness that I was used to, but there was its own beauty. Uh, and that was the start perhaps of me learning to look at things and ex accept that there were different ways of looking at beauty. And that was, you know, one of the, the, the places that really struck me to be able to go into warm water and swim <coughs> was amazing. Um, to enjoy that 
to enjoy the sand and not have to worry about the rain for most of the time was wonderful. But to see that this was this is all officially part of the same continent on which I lived, um, and yet it was quite a different place. Okay. Anywhere beside the sea is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, um, we're not too far from the sea here. Actually, I have to say, mm. we've never really lived far from the sea. I think London probably was the furthest. Um, we lived a bit inland in Airdrie, but not far to go. East Kilbride was the same, but not far to go to the sea. Um, and I just think last week we were in Banff at the Divisional Retreat beside the sea. I think my face was glowing last week because I had something of the sea air. Um, and to look out, um, it was a touch of har last week, you know, it came in. That's the kind of sea fog. For those of you who don't know what the har is, it comes <laughs> in um, and it makes things look different. Um, and, you know, you know the sun is there and you just think, Lord, just let the sun burn through so we can have some heat. <laughs> and that did happen. And then it was too hot. And then it was too hot then, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, just, just to be beside the sea, to see the sea one day, I mean, I think about being up in Thurzo, and one day the Pentland Firth looked absolutely great. Not that, it, I mean, it can be not nice, even oh. when it's nice, do you know what I mean? Um, and then to see a raging storm and to think, oh my goodness, we're looking at the same view, but how different it looks. Um, but I think about God's creation, it, it's if everything was the same, it would be boring. It's like, I say that about us in our Christian lives. If it were all the same, how boring would life be? So every place has got something unique. Bruce has said about um, the islands of Orkney, how, you know, they've all got this uniqueness. And I think that's about every place, every mm. country. We've all got our uniqueness, and yet we're all part of God's creation. Yeah. Oh, so many beautiful places. <laughs> there might be some recommendations come up for us. Absolutely. Well. We can have if, a look. If you think that there's uh, somewhere that we haven't been that you think we should go, <laughs> maybe <laughs> well, I'll regret saying that. <laughs> well, I think that some people might take the opportunity to tell us where to go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to turn to another song now. Number 65. Number 65. There's the wonder of sunset at evening. The wonder of sunrise I see. But the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that God loves me. There's the wonder of sunset at evening.
So, we've talked about some of the amazing places that we've been, mm -hmm. but all around our house, we have reminders of some of the <laughs> lovely places that we've been. Yes. So, I'll let okay. you start. You let me start, right. I'll let you start. Oh. This one had disappeared. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. Because I'm missing you so much. Here is oh, a Harris House paperweight. It's made of Harris tweed. And it was given to us when we left Stornoway. It certainly was. Yes. Mm -hmm. That just reminds me of what the, the sights that we saw as we went round um, the Isle of Lewis and Harris. And uh, the wonderful time that we had, we went down a lot of um, dead end roads but they could be 10 or 15 miles long yeah. and yeah. Uh, we just wanted to explore while we were there because we thought we might not get the opportunity to come back very often and we don't go back very often but when we do we're reminded of an awful lot of happy times and a lot of the things which we encountered when we went on those journeys. Yeah. What have you got then? Which one to do first? We'll do the first one first. The first one. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Well, I'll do this one. I know we've just spoken a bit about Orkney. So this this is all Orkney Islands. Mm. I can't say that I've been to them all. Because <laughs> there's little ones that, you know, that you just wouldn't go. But some of the bigger islands, I think the only one I haven't been to now is Wyre. I think I've been to all the rest of them. Okay. And Gramsie. I've got, I've got I, haven't been to, more to go. I haven't been to Gramsie, so maybe we're that's We've still got Gramsie to do. We've still got Gramsie to do, so we maybe need to we just good weather. And pack a picnic because you just walk around there. Yeah, so this is home for me. Um, and um, What's the shopping centre? <laughs> What's that? In Gramsie. The shopping centre. There's not a shopping centre in Gramsie. No. no. Sorry to disappoint <laughs> is you. Is there a shop? <laughs> I don't know. I don't Because I've never been. <laughs> So yeah, this reminds me of all the beautiful places, the the, just the islands. Let's see if I can see one that I've been to. North Ronaldsey. Been to North Ronaldsey. Uh -huh. um, and that, that was really nice. And um, I've been to Stonesy. I haven't been to Ouskiri, but that's just a wee... <laughs> I haven't been to Gearsley either, but there's not nobody stays on there. Been to, I've been to Eaglesey. You haven't been there. And I've been to Papa Westry and I've been to Ein Hallow. So there we go. All different places. Reminds me of home and reminds me of some of the beauty. Uh, the, the, the bonny days and the not so bonny days when you see the storms. Wow. Um, and as I said, you see the sea in a whole different way. Okay. Right. I'm going to see what you're doing next. I'm going to bring this one over. Because we're, yeah. Put it up against that. Here's my bookmark of the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah. It, you would be expecting us to talk about having gone to Hawaii, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking about beautiful places, um, there are lots of those islands that we haven't been to. We've only been to Oahu. Um, and it was amazing. Absolutely stunning. Um, what a, an island of contrasts from the, the great metropolis, really, of Honolulu, of, of Honolulu yes. um, to the North Shore and some of the, the places inland, um, so, so quiet in contrast to Oahu um, and Honolulu itself. It was just so amazing to be able to go and to see a completely different kind of landscape again because it's a, a new landscape. Um, the mountains are still very high, volcanic. Um, where you see soil, it's red. We don't have red soil here. Uh, when the plants were different, um, to actually work out what a coffee tree looked like. <laughs> And what coffee beans on a coffee tree looked like. Coffee and, beans are red. And see pineapples growing on the ground. Yes. Not on trees. Not on trees. Who knew? We do now. All those kind of things. Just, you know, there were so many new experiences for us. Um, in a place which 
some of our family members know very, very well um, and were completely new to us. So that's one of the many things, you know, there's a hundred or so Hawaiian shirts as well that remind me of Hawaii. Well, I might as well just stick with that. Then. Yeah, I thought you would. <laughs> so I, you've got the bookmark, I've got the plate. <laughs> so it's on a, yes. a restand. Um, so Oahu is the one that we've been to. I remember before we um, we were going out, we were talking about going out, I think we maybe had it booked, um, and I had given you that globe for the silver, our silver wedding because we went out that year, and I think I was looking at it with my dad, and we actually said, well, so where is Hawaii, my dad says. I didn't realise how far away. What's it near? What's it near? It's not near anything. Uh, nothing. <laughs> um, and I remember getting on the flight and thinking it was only going to be about an hour and a half, five <laughs> hours. <laughs> Five hours flight um, to Honolulu. Um, and then, of course, we were staying on the, the North Shore. That was from Los Angeles. That was Yeah, that was from Los Angeles, not from not from this country, from Los Angeles. So we already had, we did an hour and a half flight to, uh, from Aberdeen to Heathrow, then about 11 hours to, <laughs> to LA, and then five hours to Oahu, uh, to Honolulu. And um, for me, um, so looking at the, the globe and seeing where it was mm. and then sitting on the beach on the north shore i'm going to speak up i'm not going to speak about the north shore, i'm going to speak about something of the, how i felt a little later i sat and i looked right out so we're on the north shore looking out and i could see nothing there was absolutely nothing now, i suppose i could sit on the bay of scale and in orkney mm -hmm. and feel exactly the same because you look out west there, and probably the next thing would be Canada, Canada America, some, some North American, somewhere North yeah. American country. But and I remember feeling quite vulnerable sitting there, you know, um, because I, I just there was just me on this beach and the Pacific Ocean out there, um, but. Um, again, I just t totally amazed at some of the things that we, that we saw, the, the the beaches. And I think the thing, the other thing was, you know, if you go to see a sunset, you need to be really quick mm. because it's almost like you're, you're in a light room and then the, the the switch is flicked off because one minute the sun is there and the next minute, boom, it's off. There's just nothing and it's darkness i mean it's not quite as quick as that but it is quite quick isn't it you you really got to be quick if you're going to see the sunset and take uh, pictures of the sun in different stages and um, you know um, but it's just beautiful and uh, the people are amazing and some of the landscapes as bruce has already said uh, the pineapples grown in the ground because i always thought a pineapple grew in a tree <laughs> but it doesn't it grows in the ground um and the coffee, the coffee beans on the tree, they're red. They have to roast them to go brown. And just some of the amazing things. And um, I just thank God for that opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, the, the, the Honolulu, the city, and then just to go to some of the wee. I mean, where we, we stayed at, what was it? Haliva was the nearest place. Just a tiny wee place, but beautiful. I thank God for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I went to some more family and we went to, yes, Niagara Falls and got the picture taken. It wasn't quite like that. It was a, a screen behind us and they added the picture of the falls behind us afterwards. But it, it's just such a, a sight of amazing power. Uh, and a lots of things went through my mind when we went on the boat um, towards the, the falls. And uh, I was just waiting for it to get really, really rough, you know, Pentland Firth kind of rough, as we got nearer the falls. And it didn't. There was a drop in temperature um, as we came away from the falls, wasn't there? Yeah, because we went right in. We went right in and we, the temperature had risen and we didn't realise oh, it. Oh, really warm. And then when we came away, we were aware of the temperature dropping again. Uh, and, you know, just the amount of water that's coming across those falls um, constantly, it was absolutely amazing. The, the height that it was dropping, plunging down, and uh, that we were able to get as close as we were 
and able to enjoy that game. More than once we've been able to go to see yeah. the falls at Niagara. The first time I just remember being so refreshed because it was so hot, mm. the weather. Well, I'll stick with Canada then. You're awake Canada. I'm awake well. Canada too, might as well. My last one's different from yours, I know it is. That's good. This, the first, my first visit to Canada, and I, I decided, I, would, I used to collect dolls when I was younger, but just buy them as if they came from a place. But this this one actually was, I've got two or three different ones up the stair. Um, so we went to some amazing places in Canada, we went to Niagara Falls, but we went to, I don't know if you remember Manitoulin Island, mm. and a lot of it, um, talk, you know, it's, it's out in the sticks, uh, and some of the the native Indian, <laughs> native Indian, is that a native Indian? A native something, isn't it? <laughs> well, I would imagine you'd be, have to be pretty well wrapped up in winter I would think time. so, in winter time you would, because the starkness of the, um, the starkness of the, summer and the winter it gets very very cold um we went to canada saw some amazing people we've only ever been to ontario haven't we mm -hmm. um we did we did land in labrador is that in that's in ontario, well, I don't know what's in ontario. Where is it? it's on the east coast it's on the east coast so <laughs> <laughs> we landed there we did get out of the plane so we haven't really we haven't really um, been anywhere else but ontario and but we, we landed someplace else halifax halifax nova scotia nova scotia yeah we, we did get out the plane there to clear customs we didn't we get out of the airport we didn't we weren't allowed out the airport um but you know we've we've um, seen some different cultures we've seen some um you just realise how big that country is when you you have to drive five hours to get to where we we're going to go after a however long flight. Um, but some of the beautiful places that we were able to, to see um, and experience some of the culture uh, was really, really good. And another reminder of some of the beauty of God's creation. Um, we did manage a, a holiday uh, when we did go out of Ontario into Michigan. And then out at the other end of Michigan, back into a different bit in Ontario, mm -hmm. didn't we? Um, but yeah, different places, different people, different scenery, different cultures, all part of God's creation. Mm -hmm. One way for me, yeah, yeah. is the, oh, the big picture. Oh, there we are. Can't even see it. It's so big, I'm struggling to see it. Right, yeah, Cornwall. Um, and that was a picture that I... I drew and painted um, after our family visit to Cornwall and lots of our family memories on it. So maybe not the usual um, Cornish scenes that you would expect, but uh, actually things that are significant to us and remind us of a holiday which we had as a family. I suppose St Michael's Mountdown at the bottom here would be one of the things that was absolutely stunning. If, um, we could have seen if we could see it, hopefully <laughs> we'll go back and we'll see it in the sunshine. What are you seeing? Yeah, no, oh no, I'm just trying to think, but I know because there's things painted on it that were uh, just. Um, we'll have a little reminder of what the yeah, stories were yeah, behind. Yeah. <laughs> all, yeah. All of those um, different pictures. Each uh, each one of those little pictures is significant to uh, a story that happened on the holiday, from the keys being lost, my keys being lost, right at the start of the holiday. Um, to, I don't know what would be the... Erland uh, opening his wallet. Erland opening his wallet down in Penzance. Yes. And paying for something. That was a shock. <laughs> so Cornwall is a beautiful place. Uh, and again, a variety of beauties, sorry, a variety of beauties within that. Um, north coast and south coast can be very different. Yeah. And I'm going to find out more in a couple of years' time. Yeah. Okay. Bonnie. A bonnie bonnie picture. I'm not I'm not even sure who it is. It's in um, hand. But it's a band, yes. So this was made by uh, Shona. Shona's mum and dad um, came to the Salvation Army in Venecti. So this reminds me of Venecti. I'm not sure if it is Venecti, but I would like to think maybe it's the East Beach <laughs> that we used to walk along. Um again, just a, a beautiful place uh, which <laughs> is in my heart. <laughs> It is. Um, since I was about five. Oh dear. Yes. Um, 
which is in my my heart. Um, it it's a place which was very dear to me as a five year old, and nearly fifty years later we were able to go and to live there. I just love um, walking along the beach. Again, a place that we've seen um, in so many different um, types of weather. On in the sunshine, it is gorgeous. But again, when there's a, a gale blowing, to see something of the rough seas and to be reminded again of uh, God's power and God's glory. Um, <laughs> and the beautiful sunsets um, and everything there. So this reminds me of Finechti, of uh, happy times as a child, happy times as an adult, uh, and working with some wonderful people. There you are. Wishful thinking with my choice of music. Oh, I've had the last song. Oh, I could have done a swap with you. It I know you happened. could have. <laughs> the next song is song number uh, 26. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions they fail not. All thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever Together, the creation story. 
It might be an account from scripture that you may have read many times. And yet, the more that we read it, the more that we learn about God and the love that he has for each one of us because he is our Heavenly Father and he wants what's best for each one of us, his children. And I think the one thing that in, the, in recent years that has really struck me about this passage um, is the first verse. Um, it says, the earth was formed and empty, empty and darkness I can't even read my own writing here, covered, sorry, and that was covered the waters and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Um, there are many people who perhaps think that the Holy Spirit was a new thing that came at Pentecost, you know, this was, you know, that he just appeared, at, the spirit just appeared at Pentecost. But here we see that the spirit of God was there at creation, as the Spirit of God has been right throughout, as you read scripture, the Spirit of God has been there right throughout, but he manifested himself in power and glory in all his fullness at a Pentecost. But in this account of scripture, God created something every day. And as you, as you read through the verses, uh, it, it, it's detailed for us what God created each day. Uh, but we see each day that God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. I don't think um, that we ever really think about the vastness of creation. I think sometimes we get caught up where we are, you know, and we think that this is it. And we forget that further afield, there is this great um, vastness of creation. And there are times when I just become overwhelmed uh, when I try to think about the vastness um, of God's creation. I think about it uh, when I've sat on the North Shore at Oahu, as I've said, and I look out to sea and I can't even begin to think how far that, that ocean goes because where I am, it's huge and yet it's even bigger than what I can imagine and sitting right in the middle of that ocean. I look up at the skies and I try to think, how far up does that go? <laughs> you know, how far up does the sky go? You know, and I think, no, I can't think about that either. Uh, I think about the sea, how deep is the sea? You know, we've sailed many places. We've sailed over to Orkney, we've sailed to the islands, we've sailed to Stornoway. Mm -hmm. I've sailed across the North Sea to, to Holland. How deep? We're right beside Loch Ness. I know, Loch Ness is the deepest. It's deeper than all the lakes put together, isn't it? In the United Kingdom. It's just so deep, I can't even start to think about that. And I look about, I look at the stars at night. I look at the moon. How far away is that from us? I can't even start to imagine what it's like. And all the planets that I can't see, it's just too much for my mind. And, and it's the same goes when I think about, when it talks about God's love, how high, deep and wide it is. We can't even start to begin to think about that in human terms. And yet God has created this world. And as I was thinking about, about all of this, I thought about the words of Psalm 8. And this is what it says. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic, how your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You've taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honour. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority the flocks and the herds, all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims in the ocean currents. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Each one of us um, has a part to play in this wonderful world that God has given us. And yet we see that all was not good 
if, if you read, uh, you know, a little further on in Genesis, God gave man beautiful garden. God told God, man not to eat the fruit of the tree. And the snake tempted them and told them to eat it. And we know what happened. They were cast out of that beautiful um, garden that God had given them. Man messed up. up. And you look right throughout scripture, uh, man continually messes up and still messes up today. But God loves us so much. And, and, and we have the Old Testament prophecy and in the New Testament, Jesus. God sent us Jesus to, to bridge that gap between God and man. Sometimes, though, we always want more. Um, more and more. Um, and God gave us Jesus. We still want more, you know. We just seem to, the more that God gives us, the more that we seem to want. As I look around um, and we see some of the beauty around us, we may think, is there any more or anything that could outdo what we see? You know, you might have been a place and you think, wow, this is great. And then you go somewhere else and you think, oh, wow, this is even better. You know, different places that we go around us. And God surprises us even more with something big, with something beautiful, with something small, with a mighty storm when we are reminded about his power. And a beautiful sunset or the display of the northern lights in the sky. Is there any more that God can give us? Because in all of this, we see the beauty of God and our creator. I just, um, and I, we're going to sing our closing song in, a, in a, a few moments time. But the words of that song became very real for me when we had a holiday in Canada, when we were in the middle of a thunderstorm. <laughs> I hear the rolling thunder. Boy, did we hear the thunder. And I and I just thought, gosh, what a powerful God we have. Um, and we see it round about us in so many ways. We see the stillness, but we see his power um, that, that he has because he is God. Out of nothing, God created the universe. God spoke. And when he did, everything started to take shape. Light, darkness, sky, land, water, winds and tides, plants, trees, sun, moon, stars and planets and animals. And we might question why we need some of them. <laughs> you know, why do we need wasps? Why do we need worms? Why do we need, I don't know, some of the most... Midges. Midges, why do we need them? But they've got a purpose other than to annoy us. We might question why we might need some of them, but they are all part of this wonderful creation that God has given us. All things in their vast array, God created. Then finally, he created humans, both male and female. His shining glory, whom he put in charge of it all. And yes, we do mess up sometimes, but God has given us this beautiful world. You and I are part of this wonderful creation. We're each here for a purpose. You might not think that you've got a purpose, but you do. We are all on this earth for a purpose and God has a plan for each one of us and each one of us has our part to play. I pray this evening that you may know how much you are loved by God and I pray that you know that you are much so much a part of his creation and that you and I have a plan and a purpose to be here in this wonderful world that God has created. I pray you have a good week and I pray that God will bless you and that you might enjoy something of the wonder of his creation as you live your lives day by day. I'm going to turn to our final song then. Yeah. Yes. Give you a clue. Number 49. <laughs> Number 49, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul, my Saviour God to thee, how great thou art. O Lord my God, 
again for joining with us this evening um, and we pray that you will indeed have been blessed, that you will know uh, God's love and that you will know that he has a plan and a purpose in this wonderful creation that he has given to us. We look forward to sharing with you again live next Sunday evening and we pray that God will bless you. And so we pray. May we thank the creator for all his creation and no one value our part in it. All these prayers we offer in Jesus' name, the living God, who sees so much more than 
we could ever think or know, and who chooses to invite us to join in the divine mission to bring love and light to this world. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Have a wonderful week. Enjoy the beauty that you can see round about where you are. We look forward to sharing with you again next week. Good night. Good night. God bless, God bless you.